Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we are embarking on one of the biggest projects we're going to take on in this series. And this is a series where I built a mountain range, but this is going to be a much more in-depth project than that, I think. It's perhaps not going to be quite on the scale of building mountains, but it's going to be pretty spectacular nonetheless. At long last, as you can probably tell from the title of the video, we are going to be starting the museum project. And this has been a long time coming for me. This has actually been basically my entire time playing Minecraft. I've had the ambition to build a museum that will contain everything that it is possible to obtain in Minecraft. And we'll put it all on display and we'll make little exhibits about it and stuff. And I think the survival guide is basically a perfect forum for this. This is the perfect arena in which to take on a project of this scale because we've already done quite a lot in this series as you can tell from the episode numbers we are getting up there into the mid 300s at this point and still there is some cool stuff to do but we have pretty much got to grips with most of the stuff this game is going to throw at us there are of course a lot of more expansive projects that we could tackle in future but i think this is going to be a really great time and place to start the museum or I say place but the place is actually chosen for us already and if you cast your minds back to the episodes where we explored more of the strongholds I actually picked a place that I wanted to build the museum out in the distance in this world and so we're gonna get a few fireworks together as you can tell from what I'm crafting right now we've got a long distance to travel and it's time to head over there and break ground on the museum project itself. And if I remember the area correctly, which I am pretty certain I do, this right here is where we're going to be starting the museum. We have an ocean monument really close by, and down below one of these hills, sort of around here, I believe, is a stronghold. And the stronghold is there for a very specific reason. And yes, I can see a chest and a bed that I set up when I first visited this area. It looks like we have been here in the past. And right here is the place we're going to be starting the museum. It's actually super close to the drowned farm, which is something I did not realize in the past. But maybe the drowned farm will become part of the museum in time. I plan this to be a very expansive build anyway so we are going to get to grips with this area for a long time to come but basically the reason the stronghold is here the reason i wanted to build the museum over a stronghold is simply because of end portal blocks they cannot be found anywhere else in the world the only other way you could get them would be using commands or creative mode and i don't want to do that in this series so i figured we would have to build the museum near to a stronghold so that we could include end portal blocks if we're going to be looking at every single block in the game End portal blocks are one of the few that cannot be found anywhere else. And so I think it's pretty important that we set up around here. So this area right here is really going to be the start of the museum project. And this is going to be huge. It's going to be like the scale of a castle times two, probably, because we will need to have a large enough area to contain every single block and item in the game. And I want to organize them like you would a museum. I want to organize them into exhibits and different kind of exhibition halls and areas and galleries and stuff that's going to contain each of these things within a certain theme. We want to have all of the kind of variants of dirt and grass and mycelium and nylium and all of that stuff in one place because those are the foundational blocks on which you grow trees and all that kind of stuff. Trees themselves are going to have their own exhibit and yes we are going to be including one of every type of mob in the museum as well. Probably a pretty expansive exhibit on villagers, to say the least, but we're also going to have all of the other hostile mobs and passive mobs that we can gather into one place, including stuff like shulkers and endermen. It's going to be a real hazard trying to trap a few of those and bring them into the museum, but we should be able to get it done. And people are probably wondering about some of the additions from the Nether update, like piglins, which we cannot include in the overworld because they will zombify. Well, my friends, we are, of course, going to be building a section of the museum in the nether as well but i think it's important whenever we start a project like this to do a little bit of groundbreaking and clear the area this is what they talk about when they mean groundbreaking i'm not saying groundbreaking as in like a groundbreaking achievement i mean breaking ground we need to actually get this project started by preparing the terrain around here for exactly what it is we're going to build and that means probably flattening out a large enough area around here or at the very least clearing some of the trees so we have a larger area to work with 
It's going to be a mammoth project, but I brought a bunch of supplies with me that I plan on building out at least a couple of wall designs and laying out some foundations here and there for some of the stuff that I want to build in this area because it's going to be expansive, it's going to be grand, and it's going to be one heck of a building challenge. Actually, one of the first things I'm going to do while I'm out here is put together a few furnaces and start smelting some cobble into smooth stone because I don't have all that much regular stone and I could just go haste mining with a silk touch pickaxe or something, but I really want to get started on this project today. Let's hop into bed, let's set our spawn over here, and this is going to be a project we'll be working on for a little while here in the survival guide, and we'll probably introduce a few tutorials into the mix as well. So it's not just going to be a survival let's play for the next little while, but I have plans for this area and how we can work some of this stuff into new tutorials. But the other stuff I brought with me mainly includes stuff like concrete powder that we're going to be using to mark out the areas where I plan to build some of the structures here. I've got some stone brick and some stone for building the majority of the, the framework of the structure and some wood for detail and highlights, blackstone and some of the crimson and warped stems are going to be worked into these designs as well. And I have a couple of glass panes in here. Most of these are light grey, which you can't quite see super well. So with these supplies, we're going to be building up an example wall of some of the outside of the building. But there's going to be a couple of different styles in this. There's going to be some stuff that's a little bit more kind of classical in terms of architecture. There's going to be some stuff that looks a little bit more modern because I want this museum to feel like something that's been built up over time and expanded as the world's history has rolled on. But like I said, the first thing I want to do with this area is clear out some of the trees, clear out some of the terrain, give myself an idea of the shape of this area and what exactly it is I'm working with. And from there, we will start building up the walls of the museum. So first things first, we're going to clear out some of the trees and the terrain, and we're going to do that in the form of a time lapse. Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse and I'm actually going to keep the replay mod running for the next little while because I want to build up a section of the wall that I've already designed for the exterior of, I guess, the front, maybe some of the sides of the museum as well. It's a little bit tricky to determine exactly what the layout of this is going to be without really extensively planning it in creative first. But what I want to do is lay down a little bit of red concrete so we can decide exactly how large the the front section of the museum is going to be. We also need to determine 
sort of where the main entrance is going to be. And illogical though this might seem, I am probably going to build it facing towards this ocean on this side. And the reason for that will become a little bit more logical over time. I'm thinking we can build up some sort of like port area around this, maybe some ships coming in or something like that, and maybe the reason for people traveling here is to visit this museum to begin with, but also because if I look at this from the top down, the way I've been thinking about it is that there is a sense of symmetry in the land here. If you face this direction specifically, like the east wing of the museum could end up being over there and the west wing of the museum could end up being over there even though technically that is north and this is south it's kind of weird but the land has a certain symmetry to it which really would benefit from me having the entrance here because i'm fairly certain that if i put the entrance here i'm not then going to want to build something over in this direction because that would involve taking up sections of the ocean, right? So the idea is that we're going to be building the entrance sort of over here. And I think we're probably actually going to start around here by the beacon. With the center point, may as well be here at the center of the beacon itself. And from each side of that, we're going to go out three and then place another block of red concrete. And that's going to allow us to break up this section of the front wall into a series of odd numbered sections. And I like to build using odd numbers because then the center of a, you know, a peaked roof or something like that can always end up being one block instead of two. And building things up that way means you end up avoiding a little bit more awkwardness in the layout when you might end up with a two block wide section that's supposed to be the center of something. It usually looks better if you're working with odd numbers than even, right? So I think this section here is going to be the doorway. I'm actually going to leave a little bit of leeway either side. So what we actually want is for the wall sections to start here so that we can have a grand entrance basically centered on this block but with these blocks either side taken into account and just starting the wall here. So I'm going to build one section of this wall up block by block so you guys can see all of that stuff in action and then from there I think what I'll do is build up a second maybe a third and a fourth as well using the replay mod so you can take a look at what this looks like from the side so you're not looking at the entire thing up close you're getting more of the bigger picture of these walls coming together and it may mean that I have to take down some of this hill on this side I think the other side is mostly clear and more terraforming and stuff is going to happen in this area once I've figured out exactly where I want the layout of the museum to go. But right now, without too much planning having gone in behind the scenes, I'm kind of making it up as I go along. That looks like a decent sort of size for a grand entrance, maybe a little bit taller with some sort of peaked roof over the front of it, maybe some columns or something holding up a canopy out the front, a marquee of sorts maybe, something like that, I don't know. So one of the things you want to do when you're building with something on this scale is include a little bit of depth. So we're going to have these recesses in the walls here and we're actually going to build up behind those using stone and stone brick. Basically in a bit of a mix so that we end up with a little bit more texture going into this. We're going to have a stair on top of that and I'm working from a design that I've figured out in a creative mode testing world so I do have an idea of what I'm doing as regards the layout. I'm not just freestyling this entire build this time. We're going to come along the back here one two three four five and then we're going to come in one aligned with this block here and that's where we're going to put another one of these kind of supporting buttresses with the stone brick stairs like so and yeah, that's looking about right to what I have in creative. We'll put another little pillar here and stairs on top of that, and that frames out the section where we're going to build the window. From there, we're actually going to be building up on top of this section of the wall, which might not look like it has a huge amount of depth to it right now, but trust me, we'll be getting there in just a second. I've removed those two red concrete blocks for now, now that we're done measuring that section out, and we're actually going to break down some spruce planks and some dark oak planks into dark oak stairs, and we're going to use these to start building up a frame for this window. We get some slabs, of the dark oak as well one there and one there we'll connect the stairs underneath inverted like so so that it has this nice sort of nice sort of ornate section of the frame there and we'll make a couple of spruce trap doors basically to top and tail each of the spruce blocks that we're placing here so that it curves the gradient of these blocks a little bit more like so that looks quite nice we're going to get ourselves some polished black stone walls add those to the tops of here like so and like so and then the rest of the window frame is going to be made out of dark oak fences from there on upwards and then we're going to repeat this pattern on the top side of that. I'm gonna hop up onto the walls so that we can add these three fences like so. If you're standing on top of fences, you don't even have to worry too much about the fences hitbox because you're always going to be 
a half block up on top of it anyway. And we can add the polished blackstone walls back onto that. We want two of these dark oak stairs facing inwards from each of the walls like so. Add the slabs onto each of those. We'll turn the stairs outwards like that and like that so it mirrors the design we have down below. And we'll put another spruce plank here between the two of those which once again will add a trapdoor to the top and bottom. And now if I hop down here, that right there is the frame for a nice tall ornate window that's going to be inset into every panel of the front wall of this building. We can and should bust out the scaffolding for this one as well since it's going to make building with this level of height a whole lot easier. So a spruce trapdoor on top and underneath like I said just kind of evens out the curve there a little bit makes it a little bit more shallow towards the center as curves really should be and up behind the backs of these we can start randomizing or sort of alternating between the stone bricks and the regular stone to kind of imply that the structure has some of this stone support in here. We are going to have a row of stone bricks across the top to kind of formalize the structure of the window there and we'll hop back down here and do the same on this side as well kind of having a random choice between stone and stone brick and this is where we're going to start putting the glass in and i felt like doing something a little bit more stylized for these windows so what we're going to do is a kind of checkerboard pattern of dark gray light gray black and white starting at the bottom here with the two darker colors and then effectively gradiating upwards towards the top so then we switch to gray and light gray like so we can have the gray on the outside like that and then the light gray starts in there we have two more light gray in the middle with the white and then the white on the outside corners and the light gray in the center because of the connected textures between the gray and the dark gray panes there. It actually looks a little bit more like it's got braces in there and the window is meant to be stylized after a certain fashion. And I like the way that looks. I'm really happy with that as a window design. We could also do a better checkerboard pattern if we wanted to omit one of these colors and just have gray and light gray going up into white at the top. Now this is where we can inject a little bit more color than just gray and brown into this build because I want little accents of color popping out here and there. And I think some of the stripped warped stem and crimson stem blocks are going to be perfect for a detail like this. We're going to invert a stair over the top of that and it just looks like a nice little wooden panel has been inset into there, stained in a very deep red. We can do that further up with the warped stems as well with the kind of like washed out blue cyan color that they have. I think that's going to look really nice as a little detail. And above each of these sections here, we're actually going to have wooden panels, maybe with trap doors there for a little extra detail touch. And then on top of that is going to be where the warped stem goes. Just to briefly show you what I mean, I'm just going to make a three block high panel like so. We're going to have some trap doors going up the side of it like this, starting at the bottom layer and just kind of connecting to where this stone brick pillar is going to go. And we can probably mix in some natural stone in there as well if we want to. Next up, we're going to have another set of stairs on top there. Uh, the right way up this time instead of being inverted. Behind that, we're going to have these warped stems. And I'll take that last bottom one back out so that we can fill that in with something a little bit less valuable if we want to. Another, another stone brick on top of that. And then either side of this, we're going to have some stairs jutting out from the side of the building. Inverted stair there, a couple of stone bricks here up to the top, and then a set of stairs jutting out from the top. And this one has this kind of dividing wall, so we're not going to worry too much about the stairs on the opposite side, but that's looking pretty good. We can continue the stone bricks and stone over the top of the window frame, and then we'll create a panel identical to this on the opposite side, but three blocks wide instead of two, because it's not intersecting with this wall here. Just finishing up the detail on this side, let's hop down and take a look at the finished result. With the scaffolding out of the way, we need to put some trap doors over the front of this panel here. Fold those trap doors up into there. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. This is quite a detailed window section, of course, but one of the things that's going to really benefit from is a sense of repetition. It's going to start to look a little bit more in place once it has multiple others. This is going back to my backup dancer theory of like, if you have a lot of things doing stuff in symmetry, even if it looks quite heavily detailed like this, it's all going to look very, very intentional once you have a bunch of them together. And of course, we can thicken up the back wall of this so that we have a little bit more space to work with on the interior. We can frame the window on the inside as well if we want to, or we can just frame the entire thing in stone like this so it looks a little bit more plain and you're left to focus on the stuff that is inside the room instead of looking at the stuff that's 
looking out towards the outside. And building stuff that's this detailed also requires a little bit of inventory juggling, but it's going to be worth it in the end. So I'm going to go ahead and build out three more panels exactly like this one, just kind of chained onto either side here. And we're really going to start to see this build come together a little bit more after that. But we're going to do that with the replay mod, which means another time lapse. And with those walls built up, I'm starting to feel really, really good about this project. The walls of the museum finally starting to take shape. And this is, of course, only the beginning. But as far as mega builds go, we've got a lot of room to work with here. We have enough planes biome around us that we can work with the kind of scale I'm hoping for from this project and maybe a beacon would make a good centerpiece maybe it would be kind of fun to walk through the doors of the museum and a beacon be the first thing you see i always think of the natural history museum in london which i don't know if it has one anymore but it used to have a giant uh apatosaurus or diplodocus i forget which it does it even matter skeleton <laughs> hanging basically uh, like fully constructed in the uh the main kind of uh lobby of the the main sort of foyer of the museum and you'd walk in and there'd just be this massive skeleton of a dinosaur looking down at you and it was just the most awe-inspiring thing going there as a young lad and just seeing this giant dinosaur skeleton as soon as you walk in the door when i did a museum project build back in decidedly vanilla season three which is a multiplayer server i played on for a good chunk of this channel's history I decided to try building an ender dragon skeleton up above the center of the, the main room, and I never quite ended up finishing that project. In fact, I barely got partway through it, but I think it'd be really cool to attempt something similar. So maybe we'll keep the beacon, or maybe we will do a giant ender dragon skeleton hanging from the ceiling, and I think that'd be kind of a, a fun project to take on in future and I think we need to work a lot more on the structure and the layout here, but that's going to be something for another episode because I'm just happy having at least got this project started and worked on the main walls here. Hopefully we'll be able to copy these walls around here and there and probably include some planar segments of wall here and there where there aren't going to be windows. But this is only the beginning and I'm really excited to finally 
have this project underway. And folks, that is where we're going to leave it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I do hope you've enjoyed watching this build come together little by little. Don't forget to leave a like on the episode for me if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.